Hi, good morning, everybody, and welcome to CMH Family Medicine Top Tips and Tutorials. This is Dr. Madeleine Muller, and today we're going to particularly focus on pre-exposure prophylaxis to prevent HIV infection. So who qualifies for PrEP? Um, and when it was first introduced, there was very specific groups that were targeted, but basically anybody who might be at a high risk of HIV acquisition qualifies for pre-exposure prof prophylaxis and should be offered um, and told about it. So the classic groups is our men of sex with men, our transgender women and our sex workers. Um, and largely the reason why they're more vulnerable is actually because they struggle to access care, um, usually due to stigmatization. So we partly need to create safe spaces to be able um, for these populations to access care and access, access prevention options. But very important, um, and this is one of our key groups for pre-exposure prophylaxis, is our adolescents and young people, and particularly our girls between the ages of 16 and 24 years. That is probably one of the groups with the highest HIV infection rate of all our different populations. Um, and this is partly going to got to do with them quite often being in relationships with men that might be slightly older, and that power dynamic makes it difficult to negotiate, for example, things like condom use. Um, and so any clinic where you're running, any time you're uh, providing contraception or advice to a young person, you should actually bring up the conversation of pre-exposure prophylaxis. There's also a very strong push at the moment to get our pregnant women and breastfeeding women. We know these are people who are having unprotected sex. And if they are not sure about their partner's status, um, then we definitely want to make sure that they are also covered. Um, anytime you have a person coming in for a sexually transmitted infection, we know that they are, are vulnerable and should be offered PrEP, as well as patients you identify who are injecting drugs. Very important in discordant couples, so maybe one person is HIV positive and the other one is HIV negative. If the HIV positive person is on ARVs and that viral load is suppressed, we do not need to use PrEP in the HIV negative partner. But certainly if that partner is not suppressed or if the um, HIV negative partner does not know the status of their partner or what their viral load is doing, then we need to get them some cover as well. But actually, there's there's no rules. Any person who comes in and identifies themselves at, at risk for HIV and would like to have PrEP, um, we can give PrEP. So what is it? Very easy. There's two different options. Um, the one we're going to, at the moment in South Africa, the one we're going to um, talk about the most is the daily pre-exposure pre prophylaxis option. That at the moment is a tablet. Um, there are projects in South Africa that's starting to look at using the injectable versions, um, but in our public sector, you will still be using Truvada. So that's a combination of Tenofovir and Imitricitabine in one tablet, and it just gets taken once a day. The only people who actually would not be able to have PrEP are those that have poor kidney function. We have very few issues with allergies or any other adverse effects. Um, and just notice we can go, um, the GFR needs to be under 50 before it becomes a contraindication to using pre-exposure. Just for our younger, so if you do have an adolescent that's 16 years or younger, um, sorry, that's under 16, so 10 to 15 years old, um, you can notice that GFR requirement is actually higher. The eGFR needs to be under 80 and you used to need to use the appropriate formula for that. And then on pregnant women, we can't use GFR. So as I've said, it's quite a big part of our pregnant women program um, and the serum creatinine, if it's over 85, that will be a contraindication for pre-exposure prophylaxis. So to take it is very easily, if somebody um, knows they're going to be, or they're in a relationship or they're in a scenario where they are, might be exposed, you want to start taking your pre-exposure prophylaxis, your one tablet a day, at least seven days prior to having unprotected sex. So during that seven days, you still want to be using condoms. We're obviously always going to um, recommend condom use anyway to protect against other STIs, um, but the cover period before um, before you can be considered safe from an HIV infection is at least seven days. And similarly, if somebody is, for example, leaving a relationship and are no longer going to be exposed and they want to discontinue their pre-exposure prophylaxis, we ask them to continue for seven days after their last exposure. So very easy to remember. If you've had a patient who's coming, for example, with a burst condom um, or they've had unprotected sex and they want it cover and you've prescribed that 28 days um, post-exposure prophylaxis, um, it's very well, useful to already have a conversation about PrEP. And then when they finish their um, 28 days of TLD, they can actually go straight on to, to PrEP after that. 
Monitoring is very easy. The most important thing you're actually going to monitor if they aren't pre-exposure um, prophylaxis is your HIV, which you want to do at baseline, obviously, just to make sure they're negative at one month and then three monthly after that. And you want hepatitis B serum antigen at baseline as well. If it's negative, please consider vaccinating those patients, especially our, our younger patients who might have missed the vaccination at birth. Um, but if they are positive, then, of course, you're still going to use your pre-exposure prophylaxis, but we want to monitor them as per the viral hepatitis guidelines, looking, um, uh, keeping an eye on their livers. And if they want to discontinue, you want to con discuss that with an expert in terms of the implications of them going off that tenofovir imidrocitabine combination. Um, remember, your Truvada is not only useful for HIV, but is also going to be suppressing the hepatitis B viral load. You obviously always want to screen for STIs at each of the visits, and usually we'll be seeing patients three monthly long term, and you'll check for your HIV, your STI. Um, and of course, we want to monitor the kidneys, but not in everybody. So if your patient is under 30 years of age, completely well, no other risk factors, you don't need to do any GFR monitoring. If they're more than 30 years old, just at least take a baseline GFR, but we don't need to do any monitoring after that. Um, and it's only our patients who is at risk. So patients with diabetes or hypertension or any other risk factors where you're concerned about their kidneys, um, where you want to do a baseline and then an annual GFR to keep an eye on that. Um, in our pregnant women, though, we're slightly more careful. So you'll do your baseline and at three and six months. So there's other options um, also available. So the other one is called on-demand prep. Um, it's also called the 211, and this is typically for hookups. So this is for somebody who has very occasional um, um, sexual encounters, high-risk encounters. Uh, they don't know what the what the um, HIV status of the partner is, and they just want cover for that particular for that particular event. So the studies have been done only in men of sex with men and transgender women. Um, and partly we, uh, we have not had similar results yet for vaginal sex. So this is particularly useful to cover anal sex. Um, and very simply, if you know tonight I'm going to go out, maybe I'm going to hoping to hook up, um, you want to take two tablets. So again, that's the Trovada tablets between two to 24 hours before having sex. So you'll have it before you go out for the evening. Um, and then if you've had unprotected sex, then 24 hours later, you will take another tablet at the same time. So if you took your tablet at four o'clock in the afternoon, you went out, then the next day you will take it at four o'clock again, one tablet, and then and the one day after that, another tablet again at four o'clock. Um, very simple, very easy. Um, and quite often you will find your more informed um, population you might have a patient that will actually come and, and request this. If they are asking for um, on-demand prep uh, more than once a month, you might want to start considering offering them long-term pre-exposure prophylaxis. So in summary, remember to offer our patients pre-exposure prophylaxis, especially our young people. It should be part of the conversation. It's very simple. Travada once a day. Start seven days before until seven days after. And remember to monitor the HIV every three months while your patient's on treatment. Thank you.